Hello and welcome to Astronomy with Mr Gerin. In the first video on objects in the sky, we looked at the different objects we can see in the sky and how to identify them. Today we're going to focus on the stars and how we group them into asterisms and constellations. A constellation, Latin for set of stars, is, in modern astronomy, a region of the sky. We divide the entire sky into 88 constellations, which look a bit like the borders of countries. Note that the red borders here follow straight lines. When viewed on the spherical sky, rather than a flat projection, every corner is a right angle. Each straight line follows a line of equal right ascension or a line of equal declination. See my celestial coordinates video for an explanation of these. This is similar to state lines in the USA, which follow lines of equal longitude or latitude. Except that state lines often curve due to rivers or politics, we don't have to worry about politics and geography in the sky. When most people say constellation, they actually mean asterism. An asterism is a shape or pattern formed by a group of stars, often helped by ancient astronomers' overactive imaginations. You can think of the stars as the major cities in a country, connected by imaginary lines or roads. The exact shapes and lines are unofficial, and people have come up with different versions for the same asterism. Here you can see four common modern versions of Orion. The official constellation boundaries remain the same, but the unofficial asterism lines are different. For the GCSE, you need to know, recognise and be able to draw seven common western asterisms. Orion, the hunter, is one of the best known asterisms, easily visible in the northern winter. Some people say he's holding a bow and arrow, others say it's a shield and club. Orion's belt is a smaller asterism within Orion of three stars in the middle of his body, and three stars lower down show his sword hanging from it. Orion includes several fascinating astronomical objects, including Rigel, a massive hot blue supergiant with three companion stars, Betelgeuse, a red supergiant nearing the end of its life, and what looks like the middle star of Orion's sword, which is actually the Orion Nebula a very well-studied region of star formation. The plough, shown here in light blue, is part of a larger asterism, Ursa Major, which you don't need for the GCSE. If you're asked to identify this asterism, you may say the plough, the saucepan, or the Big Dipper, but not Ursa Major. Crux, or the Southern Cross, is a set of four stars that make a cross shape. There is no Southern Pole Star, this is generally the best alternative, but it's 27 degrees away from the South Celestial Pole, making astronomical navigation harder in the Southern Hemisphere than in the North. The brightest and most southerly star is Acrux. Note how this image shows that lines of equal right ascension form concentric circles around the Celestial Poles, and lines of equal declination radiate away from the Celestial Poles. While most asterisms need a good dose of imagination, Cygnus, the swan, actually looks like a swan. You can see Deneb as its tail at the top of the image, the neck pointing downwards, and the wings stretching left and right. Cassiopeia is named for a beautiful queen in Greek mythology. Her five bright stars make a distinct W shape, which is easy to spot in northern latitudes. The summer triangle crosses several constellations and connects three bright stars, Deneb, Vega and Altair. In the northern hemisphere's summer, it appears roughly overhead at midnight. Find Deneb in Cygnus, and you can easily find the other two stars. And finally, the square of Pegasus, or the Great Square. This is another asterism that's part of a larger asterism, forming the body of the winged horse Pegasus. This is also easily visible in northern summers. When we draw asterisms, it's much easier to draw and print using inverted colours. The black of the sky becomes the white of the paper, and the bright stars become dark pencil or ink. If you're asked to draw an asterism in the GCSE exam, draw a simple but accurate diagram. Practice drawing these seven asterisms until you can sketch them from memory. There is a summary screen with all seven at the end of the video and on the linked Google presentation. Asterisms can also be used as celestial landmarks to help us navigate the night sky. We can use well-known stars and asterisms to locate other asterisms, specific stars 
nebulae and galaxies. Stars that are commonly used to find other objects are called pointers or pointer stars. You should know how to use the plough, Orion's belt and the square of Pegasus to find several objects. In the exam you may be asked to draw arrows on an asterism to locate a specific object or you may be asked to name the object an arrow is pointing to. We'll start with the plough. The handle forms a rough curve and if you extend the curve you will find the bright star Arcturus. From the other side, draw a straight line from the last two stars northward to find Polaris. Polaris isn't especially bright, but it's the brightest star in that region of the sky. Orion's belt points to three well-known objects. Draw a line through the belt to the left and you'll find Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. Draw the line to the right and just above that line, you'll first find Aldebaran, another bright star, and then Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. And lastly, the Great Square of Pegasus. Find the right side of the square and follow a line down. You'll find Fomalhaut, another bright star. And tracing a line from bottom right to top left, on a dark night you'll be able to see the Andromeda Galaxy. Finally today, we'll look at how we name stars. There are about 5,000 stars visible to the naked eye and most don't have proper names like Betelgeuse, Aldebaran and Polaris. So in 1603, German astronomer Johann Bayer came up with the Bayer system of naming stars. Now each star has a Bayer designation. A Bayer designation is a Greek letter followed by the Latin genitive name of the constellation it's in. But don't worry, you don't need to learn Greek or Latin to use it. Thus, stars have names like Alpha Tauri, Delta Orionis and Epsilon Aquilae. We generally use the first letter of the Greek alphabet, alpha, for the brightest star in a constellation. Then the second letter, beta, for the second brightest star, and so on. But Bayer didn't follow this rule very strictly, so it's not always quite correct. For the GCSE, you only need to know the first five Greek letters. You should learn the name and symbol. In order, they are alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Here we can see an excellent example in Orion. Star maps like this depict brighter stars as larger dots. Betelgeuse is Alpha Orionis and Rigel is Beta Orionis. Rigel is actually slightly brighter, but as we said, Bayer wasn't too strict in applying his rules. You don't need to learn the Latin names for constellations, as it should be clear that, for example, Orionis is Orion. Note that we name stars for their official constellation rather than their unofficial asterism. The brightest stars in the constellation Orion happen to be the brightest stars in the asterism Orion, but this isn't always the case. Also, note that the Bayer designation is only used for stars. Nebulae and galaxies don't follow this method. Here are three pages that summarise asterisms, pointers and the Bayer designation. In part three of Objects in the Sky, we look at the motion of astronomical objects through our sky. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, and have an excellent day.